Welcome to Brian's Running Reviews in partnership with Roadrunner Sports, and today we're taking a look at the Hoka Gaviota 5, completely redesigned this year, and we're also going to compare it to last year's version, the Gaviota 4, to see what changed. Let's run with it. Before we get started, I do want to say that these shoes were provided to me by Roadrunner Sports. However, no one had a chance to preview this video, and this file synopsis is my own. I'd also like to say please leave a like on the video and consider subscribing. Here we go. The Gaviota is Hoka's Max Cushion Max Stability Daily Trainer. It's essentially the stability counterpart to the Hoka Bondi, which is their Max Cushion Neutral Daily Trainer. So if you like the Bondi but wanted a bit more guidance, that is where the Gaviota comes in. And if for somebody who wants a stability shoe from Hoka but with a little bit less stack height compared to the Gaviota 5, you can go on down to the Arahi 6 which has a different kind of stability mechanism in the midsole, which we will talk about later, but a more manageable stack height in the Rahi is basically the stability counterpart to the Hoka Clifton, which is extremely popular. So I hope that makes sense, kind of puts things into perspective, but the big takeaway here is the Gaviota 5 has been completely redesigned and becomes, I think, a more modern stability shoe, and I quite like the updates. And while the Gaviota is a running shoe, it's also incredibly popular with those who like to walk or are on their feet all day for work mainly because you have a ton of cushion here that stability really helps if you're wearing the shoe for a very long period of time. The Gaviota 5 costs $175 and for some reason Hoka updated their sample size which means all the previous Hoka models had their stats for a men's size 9 while all the new Hoka shoes all the numbers Hoka is providing is for a men's size 10 so it makes it a little bit difficult to compare so keep that in mind as I run through the numbers. For the Gaviota 5 we have 36 millimeters in the heel, 30 in the forefoot for a new updated 6 millimeter drop. While last year we had 31 in the heel, 26 in the forefoot for a 5mm drop. And I'm happy to report the Gaviota 5 lost a ton of weight this year. The Gaviota 5 comes in at 10.9 ounces for a men's size 10. And I think for a men's size 9 it's like roughly 10.5 ounces. And last year for a men's size 9 we had 11.4 ounces. So you're looking at almost a full ounce of weight savings and it is very noticeable. I'm happy to see they're making this shoe much more manageable when it comes to the overall weight. And if we bring in the Arahi 6, which is basically the smaller counterpart to the Gaviota, it comes in at 9.3 ounces with 29 millimeters in the heel, 24 in the forefoot for a 5 millimeter heel to toe drop. Moving on to the upper, I never thought I would say this, but we have a wide toe box on a Hoka. They made the upper substantially more accommodating, a lot more volume here. And if you just kind of put them side by side, you'll see that the new Gaviota 5 has a lot more room towards the top. So it gives your toes a little bit more wiggle room. And I absolutely love it. Typically, Hokas do run a bit more narrow. I will say it does fit true to size, but it is a lot more accommodating compared to last year with its more traditional Hoka fit and engineered mesh. They did change the material here to a Creel Jacquard mesh, which is very similar to what we see like on something like the Mach X and the Hoka Clifton. Very streamlined, kind of a very single consistent layer, and I think breathability does increase a little bit here as well. The arch support is noticeable, but not overly aggressive, which I did find to be quite nice. The tongue has about the same level as padding as last year, maybe a little bit less, but the performance I thought held up and I was quite happy with the level of cushioning. It is partially gusseted, just like last year, with a small strip of engineered mesh on the medial side to make sure it doesn't move around. And I, I didn't have any issues with it. It didn't really bother me. It didn't really wow me. It was just kind of like your typical conventional Hoka tongue. As far as the lacing system goes, they did add an extra lace slot, so you have a little bit more customization when it comes to the overall lacing compared to last year, which I do always appreciate. Moving to the back of the shoe, the heel counter is still extremely rigid, although I will say the heel counter on the Gaviota 4 feels a bit more substantial. They also removed a lot of the padding in the ankle and Achilles area, so the experience won't be as plush. Personally, I kind of prefer this moderately cushioned experience. It doesn't make too much of a difference for me, but I could see how this removal of padding in the ankle and Achilles area could be a bummer for some people. I will say I think this updated upper is a big win for the Gaviota, mainly because you have a lot more room in the toe box and midfoot, just feels more accommodating, and the fact that my toes have a little bit more space to kind of splay out feels much more comfortable. I will say the Creel Jacquard mesh does increase the breathability just a bit, which is very much appreciated in these warmer months, and the fact we have an additional lacing slot I think helps the overall customization of the fit. I really didn't have any issues with heel slip or sliding. I think it does a good job of keeping your foot in place. The only minor drawback for some people might be the lack of padding, or sorry, the reduction in padding in the ankle and Achilles area. But other than that, I think this upper is a big step, pun intended, in the right direction. Moving on to the midsole, Hoka is changing the way they provide stability in the Gaviota series. 
Previously, they used something called a J-frame, and now they're going to use something called an H-frame. So let's dive in. To explain the J-frame, I'll actually bring in the Iraqi 6, and I think this colorway does an excellent job of highlighting the different kinds of foams in the midsole. If you flip it around here, you'll notice you have a white foam that extends partway up the lateral side, goes around the heel, and all the way up on the medial side, creating the letter J, which is why it's called a J-frame. Now, this white foam that is shaped like a J is going to be a bit more dense and keeps your foot from rolling inwards or overpronating, which is why this is a stability shoe. And as a fun side note, the Arahi 7, so the next version after this one I'm holding in my hand, will have the same tooling in the midsole and just a knit upper. I believe that comes out sometime in early 2024, kind of the January, February timeframe. So Hoka is not abandoning the J frame stability mechanism, but they are changing it in the Gaviota series. So I just wanted to bring that up. And if we take a look at the Gaviota 4, we'll see a similar J-frame, but it is slightly different compared to the Arahi. And if we flip the Gaviota 4 around, you'll notice it has a more aggressive J-frame. It's a little bit hard to see, but it's the dark gray foam that's going to be a bit more firm, wraps around the heel, extends up the medial side, and comes further into the forefoot, and is a bit more substantial compared to what we see on the Arahi 6. Uh, towards the top of the midfoot, you can clearly see the difference on how much that J-frame comes underneath your forefoot. Moving on to the H-frame, this is Hoka's new stability technology built into the midsole, and it actually just debuted on the Hoka Stinson 7, which is a max cushion stability road slash trail shoe. It's quite interesting. I did a full review on it. Go check it out. But I will say, after trying the Gaviota and the Stinson, this H-frame stability mechanism is completely different compared to the old J-frame technology we saw on the Gaviota 4. So what is an H frame? Well, it's exactly what it sounds like. It's a stability frame shaped like the letter H. And I will put a picture on the screen so you can see exactly what I am talking about. This top layer of blue foam is going to be a bit more dense. So as you sink further into it, it gives you additional guidance. So in my opinion, I actually like this updated stability methodology because it's uniform on both the lateral and medial side. So whether you supinate, roll outwards, or pronate, roll inwards, it works in both instances. While the older J-frame technology was really geared towards those that pronated or rolled inwards because you had that more dense foam on the medial side with the softer foam on the lateral side. Hoka also drastically changed the geometry of the midsole. On the Gaviota 4, we had a late stage meta rocker and that has now been changed to an early stage meta rocker on the Gaviota 5. And all that means is the rocker geometry is going to be more aggressive here on the updated edition. Rolls you a little bit quicker compared to the 4. I actually quite like it. It's helpful when you have a bulky shoe like this. And speaking of bulky, this shoe has been beefed up quite a bit. If we just take a look at the platforms, you'll notice that the outsole here on the Gaviota 5 is substantially wider compared to the Gaviota 4. It's just a bigger, bulkier midsole overall, even though a loss roughly announced, which I think is a great thing. It doesn't feel as bulky as it looks, and I will say the midsole is noticeably softer compared to the prior version, that J-frame, which again wraps around the heel and extends up on the, uh, the medial side, was rather firm. There wasn't a whole lot of squish and give to it compared to this rather soft, almost kind of Bondi-like feeling. Running in the Gaviota 5 was a pleasant surprise, although the one caveat I will say is I think the Gaviota 4 is the more stable of the two shoes because that J-frame with its very dense foam just has a firmer base to it and just felt more stable. With that being said, though, the H-frame, the wider base, does make this a very supportive option. I just don't think it's as supportive as the Gaviota 4. However, I found the ride of the Gaviota 5 to be much more pleasant. The midsole is softer, and the fact that this shoe is almost an ounce lighter, I think went a long way in making this feel like a much more runnable option. And the fact that we have the early stage meta rocker, I think kind of moves you along in a more efficient manner compared to the late stage meta rocker here on the Gaviota 4. But like I said before, Gaviota 4 with its firmer base, less aggressive rocker is the more stable of the two options but the Gaviota 5 feels more comfortable and feels more runnable without sacrificing too much in the way of stability. Moving on to the outsole even though the Gaviota 5 is the lighter option it has more rubber on the outsole I thought the traction worked quite well and the base of this shoe is just insanely wide to help kind of manage that softer midsole like we talked about before. Overall, I thought the traction was good, but I did want to kind of point out the fact it has a bit more rubber to it, and it is just wider overall. And the other thing too is, you have a little bit of a cutout in the heel section, which gives you a mini trampoline-like effect, which I think is why the Gaviota 5 feels a bit more dynamic and softer compared to the 4. I am quite happy with the complete redesign here to the Gaviota 5. I think Hoka did an excellent job of bringing this into 
the modern age. It lost almost an ounce of weight. The upper was very surprisingly accommodating for a Hoka wide toe box, and that was probably one of the biggest things I, I loved about the shoe. The midsole finally has a nice, soft, plush feel to it, and the H-frame works for those that happen to supinate and pronate, making it a bit more versatile for a wider variety of runners. I definitely recommend this as a max cushion stability shoe, and for someone who's on their feet all day or just wants a solid walking shoe, I think the Gaviota 5 is finally kind of a more modern, comfortable option compared to its predecessor. And if you're someone who wants something a little bit less bulky but still stable from Hoka, that's where the Arahi 6 comes in. And like I mentioned before, the 7 will still keep J-Frame. So J-Frame still exists in the Arahi series, but Hoka has updated to the H-Frame for their max cushion stability shoes. Well, that concludes the review. Let me know what you think of this updated stability option from Hoka. I would love to hear from you. Well, I'm Ryan from Ryan's Running Reviews, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Thanks.